Hello and welcome to Overcome Pelvic Floor 101. We're going to talk a little bit about anatomy today and specifically when it comes to the male pelvic floor. All right, so let's start with the most uh, superficial or the more most kind of outside layer of the pelvic floor. And that's going to be the urogenital diaphragm. Now, the muscles that we are looking at include the bulbocavernosus, the ischiocavernosus, and the transverse perineum. And all of these really assist in uh, orgasm and sexual health and also bladder control. I wanna draw your attention also to the perineal body. Now this area is right in the center of all. It's kind of where everything gathers together. And this is a really accessible area for you to start to tune into. It's between the base of the penis and the anus. So this area right here is an area that we will be working on with some trigger point release work toward the end of our program. So don't worry about it now. It's just something that you will be working on toward the end. So I wanted to draw your attention to it since we're on the picture. Now, the bottom part of the, of the picture here that we're looking at is sometimes called the anal triangle. So this has really the rest of the pelvic floor and it's the deeper layer. So these are the muscles that really make up the bulk of the supportive pelvic floor muscles that help support your internal organs and that sling around the rectum. So we're talking about really the levator ani. Uh, also, of course, we have the sphincter that goes around the anus as well, but let's talk right now about the levator ani. So the levator ani muscles include the puborectalis, the iliococcygeus, and the pubococcygeus. Both the puborectalis and the pubococcygeus, they start at the pubic bone, and the pubococcygeus hooks to the coccyx, or the tailbone in the back, and the puborectalis wraps around the rectum. So note that the pubococcygeus is sometimes referred to as the PC muscle. I'd say it's kind of the most famous, if you will, uh, muscle of the pelvic floor, and is one that actually helps assist with orgasm in both men and women. Uh, the puborectalis really assists in bowel emptying. So if it's tight or if it's in spasm, it can result in incomplete bowel evacuation or difficulty in that area. This big muscle here at the bottom is actually the glute. It's one of the, it's the gluteus maximus. But deep to this, there are some other muscles that are very closely tied to the pelvic floor. And so these would include the coccygeus, the piriformis, and the obturator internus. These muscles rotate and control the movements at the hips and also contribute to pelvic floor function. Uh, however, they're not pictured on this just because they are deeper in the pelvis. Just know that a lot of the times when we have pelvic floor dysfunction, we have hip muscular dis dysfunction as well. So we're going to be approaching all angles of our pelvic musculature, including our hip rotators, our pelvic floor, etc., throughout the Overcome program. Okay, the last thing I want to show you here really quickly is just a the bony pelvis, a model of the bony pelvis. And this is really what you think of when you think of putting your hands on your hips when you're doing that motion and putting your hands on your hips, you're actually putting your hands right here on the ilium, the ilium or the ilia of the bony pelvis, these wings right here. So the hip joints themselves are actually right in there. This is the hip joint. This is the ball and socket hip joint. We don't have the, the ball part, but this is the socket of the hip joint. And this right here is the ischial tuberosity, or the sitting bone. So when we talk about widening the sitting bones apart in the Overcome program, you'll hear that being talked about in some of the moves. That's what we're talking about is these ischial tuberosities here and here. So think about widening the sitting bones apart. The pelvic floor muscles actually sit in this area between the sitting bones, from the pubic bone in the front to the tailbone in the back. So again, widening the sitting bones apart is the ischial tuberosities here and here, the ischial tuberosity on both sides. We have the pubic bone in the front. We have the tailbone, the coccyx or the tailbone, which is right down here. Above it is the sacrum. And again, these are the ilium, the ilia of the bony pelvis. 
All right, that's all for now. I hope you've learned a little bit more about your anatomy of your pelvic floor and your bony pelvis as well. And I hope you'll come back and join me for a little bit of interesting information about the jaw and pelvic floor connection that is coming up next.